Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Rugby Baptist Church's online scattered service. During today's service, we're going to be hearing from the Gregory family, Matt and Suzanne and their children, Seth and Esther. Now, we've been supporting them as missionaries in Albania for some time, but now they've finished their service, term of service with BMS, and they've returned to the UK. And I, I thought it would be good for us to hear one last time from them how they're settling back down to life here in, in the UK. We're also going to be receiving our notices from a new source. At the church meeting last week, we welcomed two new deacons, Mick Dolman and Emma Spraggett, replacing Ian and Emma, who, Emma Tiller, who reached the end of their terms of office. Emma also stepped down as church secretary. So the notices will be given by our new church secretary, Graham Ridgeway. And in our reflection today, we're going to be looking at the prayers of Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, whose praying was fervent, whose praying was faithful, but whose praying was also quite strange when you stop and think about it. And as we worship, as we come to worship, let's pray together. Almighty God, we come into your presence this morning full of praise. We could spend the whole of our time together praising you for what you have done. But even that would not be enough. We simply this morning praise you for who you are. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the God who is above all gods. We praise you for your love shown to us every day. We praise you for your majesty and holiness to which we can only aspire. And we thank you for your care for us, shown in the ministry and the teaching of Jesus. And as we worship you this morning, as we look at your word together, as we, we hear from, from the Gregory family, as we pray together, Help us through our worship together, even though we are scattered and in our own homes. Help us to catch a glimpse of your glory and your love. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship God together. See 
lovely to be with you all today. Welcome to our um, home here in Hadfield. It's a bit of a cold, wet, windy day here today, but it's great to be with you. So firstly, thank you to everybody who prayed for our pets to make it safely from Albania. They're here with us and we're so thankful. So we're going to introduce them to you this morning. So here's Sprout. Put your head up. Good morning. And here's Jerry. Fast asleep in his bed because it's so cold for him outside. So what we thought we'd do um, for now is just to um, share how we're, how we're doing. And so we're going to ask each other some questions to share with you this morning. So Seth and Esther, let's start with what are you enjoying about being here in the UK? Seth? Um, I'm enjoying um, going to school and learning some new things. And whilst we've been at school, we've adopted for... A charity we adopted a sloth so some information about the sloth we adopted should be coming through maybe by the time we get back to school so that's been really exciting and I've enjoyed that a lot brilliant thank you S what have you been enjoying I, about being in the UK there's some uh, reservoirs um, down the road and I, I enjoy going for walks with the dog mm -hmm. um, and everyone else um, yeah yeah, it, it's been really lovely. So, Seth, is there anything that you miss from Albania? Um, I miss my friends because I have really good friends in Albania and I really miss being with them and playing with them. So I really miss them a lot. Yeah, Bess, what about you? I miss my friends in the community of Albania. Yeah. And is there anything that you found difficult about moving to the UK, Seth? Um, it's, it's been difficult not being able to see family as much as I'd like to, and, um, yeah, it's not, it's not been really that fun because we've not been able to see them as we should have done if this whole coronavirus thing didn't yeah. happen. Yeah, Esther, what about you? It's been hard to, um, settle into a new school and, um, that we can't do things that would usually what makes a school a school yeah so they can't work in groups and do all those kind of things together so it's seth and est um everybody at the church has just been praying for us is there something that you'd like them to continue to pray for um that uh, this coronavirus thing will be over so we can just see family and be be together to be able to see the family and that maybe we could come to the church at some point soon. That would be lovely, yeah. Yes. Um, probably that like Covid can come over and we can see family and that me and Seth can have a good rest of the year at school. Yeah, that's brilliant. Seth, you've got a Bible verse that you'd like to share. Okay. Um, why is this Bible verse special to you? Um, this Bible verse is special to me because um, this was one of the Bible verses my teacher used to say to me or well, to the class when I was in Albania. So it's num numbers. numbers 24, number six. Number six, 24 to 26. May the Lord bless you and take care of you. May the Lord be kind and gracious to you. May the Lord look over, look on you with favor and give you peace. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Good morning. This morning's reading is taken from 1 Samuel 2, verses 1 to 10. Hannah's prayer. Then Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. In the Lord my horn is lifted high. My mouth boasts over my enemies. For I delight in your deliverance. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is no one besides you. There is no rock like our God. Do not keep talking so proudly, or let your mouth speak such arrogance, 
for the Lord is a God who knows, and by him deeds are weighed. The bows of the warriors are broken, but those who stumble will be armed with strength. Those who will fall hire themselves out for food, but those who were hungry hunger no more. She who was barren has borne seven children, but she who has many sons pines away. The Lord brings death and makes alive. He brings down to the grave and raises up. The Lord sends poverty and wealth. He humbles and he exhorts. He raises the poor from the dust. He lifts the needy from the ash heap. He seats them with princes and has them inherit a throne of honour. For the foundations of the earth are the Lord's. Upon them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his saints, but the wicked will be silenced in darkness. It is not by strength that one prevails. Those who oppose the Lord will be shattered. He will thunder against them from heaven. The Lord will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horn of his anointed. Here endeth the word of our Lord. Hi everyone, um, we thought we'd just fill you in a little bit more on our transition um, back into the UK. As the kids said, it hasn't been as we'd hoped. We haven't been able to get out and about as much as we hoped. Um, we haven't been able to see family um, as much as we'd planned, um, but we know that that's the case for a lot of people. Um, we've been back for just over three months now, and um, our job hunting has begun. Um, Suzanne, do you want to share a little bit about what you're doing? Yeah, I'm looking for um, work within the education sector. Um, I've just put in an application for an intervention worker. Um, so, um, yeah, I just value prayer for that. Hopefully next week we'll see if that's positive or not. Um, but really just trusting that God will have the right opportunities um, there for us. Yeah, and I've, I'm applying for jobs in the charity sector. Um, at the moment I have an application in um, for an organisation working with the homeless communities in Manchester. So again, yeah, we just really value your prayers um, as we go through this this process of job hunting, that the, the right job will come at the right time. And yeah, so we'd, we'd value your prayer on that. Yeah, life here can um, feel a little bit daunting, you know, although um, we left the UK 18 years ago, things have changed and we're, we're in a town that we've never lived in before. Um, and so at times things can feel a little bit isolating, a little bit overwhelming, but, you know, we're hugely thankful for answered prayers um, Seth and Esther are settling into school so well and um, they're making friends, they're um, enjoying their learning, they like their teachers and that's that's been a massive answer to prayer for us. Um, we've also been able to make connections with the local church here and um, we've been able to attend a few short services which has been a huge blessing and um, you know in a time when it's difficult getting out and about to meet people We've just been really blessed and encouraged by um, the welcome that we've received there. Yeah. Um, we also just wanted to thank you um, for all your prayers, for all your support, um, particularly over this time, but over, over the years gone by as well. Um, we really do appreciate um, the prayers that have been said for us um, over the years. Um, we've left behind ministries that we both loved um and we, we we trust that that now is the right time for us to be in the uk um but we know that those programs continue um that those prayer needs um that you've prayed over the years have con they continue for those programs um so please do continue to pray for um gdq and for Tecora um as they grow as they evolve and particularly during this time of of covid um so yeah, again, thank you for all of your prayers, for all of your support um, over the years. And hopefully when situations return to some kind of normal, 
um, we'll be able to come down and see you in the flesh and yeah continue our friendship with you so again thank you so much for all your love and support um take care um thank you thank you bye bye, -bye. Today I want to tell you the story of two prayers, one woman and one troubled family. The event, the event took place around 1100 years before the birth of Jesus, and they concerned a woman called Hannah. Now Hannah was married to a man called Elkanah, who loved her dearly. Now she should have been happy, but for two things. First, she had not been able to have any children. Now today, many families choose not to have children or can't have them, but lead fulfilled lives. But back in those days, children not only represented blessing, but also security in old age. Without children to look after them, women in particular faced potential hardship or even starvation. The other thing that caused her sorrow was that her husband had another wife, whose name was Penina who had had children. And boy, did she let Hannah know it. She tormented Hannah any chance she got. Now, Elkanah did his best, but really he made matters worse by favouring and loving Hannah more than Penina, which made Penina all the more bitter, all the more angry, and made Hannah's life hell. Things came to a head one year when Elkanah, Hannah, Penina and Penina's children went to Shiloh, which was a place of worship, to worship God there. Now, during the worship feast, Elkanah openly showed his love for Hannah, which made Penina worse. And she tormented Hannah so, ba so badly that Hannah stood up and she began to pray. And that was her first prayer. 
Her prayer, as recorded in the Bible, was fervent. She wept. She stood there. Her mouth was moving, but no words were coming out. She was so choked with emotion. It was so much that Eli, the high priest, thought that she was drunk and rebuked her. And what she prayed then was effectively this. Lord, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. He will not be mine, but yours. He will not be the security of my old age. He will not be a blessing to me by being part of my household. He will come here to this shrine and he will serve you. Now, there's a lot of things we could take away from this. We could focus on how fervent her, prayer, her prayers were, how emotional. I've been in many prayer meetings over the years where people would be more likely to be accused of being sleepy than being drunk. We could focus on her persistence, continuing to pray hard for so long after her prayers went unanswered. We could focus on how Hannah's bitterness did not make her fundamentally a bitter person. She was still willing to give back to God. And you might want to think about any of those in the week to come. But I want to focus on for a moment on how strange her prayer was. Here was something that she desperately wanted and desperately needed. A son as a blessing, a son to love and a son to take care of her in her old age. But her prayer was only answered when she offered to give back that which she was given. Perhaps, I don't know, but I'm speculating, perhaps up until that point, her prayers had been for herself. Give me a son so that I can rub that cow Panina's face in it. Or maybe her prayer showed a lack of trust. Give me a son so that I'll have someone to depend on in my old age. Now those prayers went unanswered. In the New Testament, in the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3, James says this, when you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. And it's interesting to me that her prayer was only answered when her focus changed. If this prayer was answered, her status would not be enhanced. Her home situation would not be improved. All that was moved on to the back burner. Her prayer became about dedication to God. And when that became the, pro, uh, the focus, then her prayer was answered. In Luke 18, Jesus told the story of two men who prayed. One was a respectable Pharisee who made a big show of praying, boasting really about what a great and good man he was, how holy he was. He made sure everybody could hear his prayers. The other man was a tax collector, a sinner, who would not even look up to heaven, but simply prayed, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And Jesus said the tax collector, whose focus was not on himself, but on God, went home put right with God. Sometimes, you know, it's the focus of our prayer, not the content of the prayer that matters. Hannah's prayer was answered. And she went on to have a son called Samuel. She kept her promise to God and Samuel was dedicated to God. And he went on to become one of the greatest prophets in Israel's history, anointing King David to be king in Jerusalem. But as she left her son Samuel at the shrine, she uttered a second prayer. The one that Colin read to us, and it was very different to the first her first prayer was short, sharp, a prayer of desperation and of surrender to God. The second was a prayer of exuberant, extravagant praise of God. And if it sounded familiar to you, it's because it would be echoed generations later by Mary when she learned that she would give birth to the Messiah. This prayer also marks one of the, the bookends of the books 1 and 2 Samuel with prayers by King David marking the other end of this narrative story. 
Biblical scholars call this an inclusio, pieces of text that mark the beginning and end of a story. But although Hannah's two prayers are very different, they have this in common. Once again, Hannah's focus is not on herself, her needs or even her happiness at the birth of a son. Her focus is on God. Her prayer never mentions her issues, her desires, her situation, her family life. It never mentions Elkanah or Penina directly. It never mentions Samuel specifically. It's all about God. Perhaps what we can take away from Hannah and her prayer life is not only her faith and trust in God or her fervent prayer, although I think we could learn a lot by thinking about those things. Today, what we might think about is her focus in prayer. It's all about God. And maybe during lockdown, even though God knows there's enough to pray about in the world and in our society and in our town, maybe even during lockdown, our prayer life might deepen if we take the focus off ourselves, our needs, our world, our wants, and focus just on God for a little bit more. May God bless you this week. Go with God. Good morning, everyone. And prayers first for our world. Let us pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers to you for our broken, overworked and run-down world. Your creation was perfect, but our stewardship has been poor. Please help us to help the environment, make us aware of the pollution we cause, the need to address climate change and to reverse the dramatic decline in our wildlife. Pray for people who, through no fault of their own, are caught up in conflicts and disasters throughout the, this world. Pray for the agencies trying to bring help, food and comfort. We pray for our BMS missionaries throughout the world, but particularly Matt and Suzanne Gregory, who have worked hard to bring about teaching and lifestyle changes in Albania. Their work has brought people to Christ and we give thanks, Lord, for their commitment as their time in Albania comes to a close. We pray that they will be guided to new pastures in your name, Lord. Our prayers for our country. As the UK heads towards another week of lockdown, we pray, Lord, that there will, will soon be good news of a vaccine. Prayers for our government, and we pray that they will do the right things for us all. May their decisions be guided by you, Lord. Covid wasn't something they'd expected to have to deal with when they took office. There have been mistakes because no one actually knew what we were dealing with. Now, with new knowledge, may they lead the country forward with integrity, calm and compassion. We pray for those people who don't want to help our world by conforming. Whatever we all do, may it not be for selfish reasons, but the, for the benefit of our fellow man. And we pray for our town. Prayers for all the citizens of rugby, for our leaders, members of the emergency services, the NHS, and all who have carried on working during these difficult times, whether shop assistants, charity workers, bin men, postal workers, delivery drivers, in fact, everyone who has tried to carry on to make lives easier for us all. Pray that things will soon ease for all who live and work in the area. And now prayers for our church. This week we have welcomed new people onto the diaconate. May the Lord bless them and guide their paths to what work is required of them. We give thanks for those people who are continuing serving in this special calling. Whilst we say goodbye to Emma as church secretary, we give thanks for how she's managed these last few months with all its difficulties. Thank you, Emma, for your hard work, diligence and always being there. It's now time to welcome a new church secretary, Graham. May the Lord give you strength to deal with the new and different situations, calm where there are difficulties, a sense of humour when required, wisdom and knowledge to help us all move forward 
and to be a friend and guide to David. And so we pray for our minister David, who did not expect his transition to Rugby Baptist Church to be like this. Pray for him as he leads this church into new things, a new era for the church and for everyone at Rugby Baptist. Members or non-members, we pray that the future will be bright and enlightened because hopefully we have learnt lessons and can go out into the town in helpful and considerate ways to bring hope, love and cooperation to the town, its businesses, its residents and the workers. I will leave some time now for personal prayers and those you know who are in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Hi Rugby Baptist Church. I am your new church secretary. Emma Tiller has retired and on Tuesday I was elected to be the new church secretary. My name is Graham Ridgway if you don't know it. At that meeting two new deacons were also elected. That's Emma Spraggett and Mick Dolman. One old deacon was re-elected, Suzanne Upton. The church treasurer, Chris B, was re-elected. And as I say, I was elected as church secretary. None of those positions are for status or kudos, but for service. And we could all do with your support and your prayers as we try to serve the church as best we can. We've taken delivery of the equipment to help us to live stream our services and our technical experts are trying to get to grips with everything and have some training but before too long we would hope to bring you uh, streamed services from inside our church building that would be especially good if we could do it for some of our Christmas services. Church suite is not something that you suck during the sermon it's a software package to help us manage the church, but also to find out what's going on and to help in communication. There is a guided tour over Zoom on Wednesday with Emma Tiller, so be there. I have a calendar with details of all my church events and meetings, and the directory will be on there eventually. Take part in art. You only have one week to get your artwork back to Elaine uh, before the uh, grand assembly uh, of the 60 different acetates that have gone out. So we do need them all back, uh, otherwise I shall have to do one. Uh, but if that could be done by um, the 22nd of November, that would be good. And that's all the notices this week.
As we end our time of worship together, let's pray together. May the love of Jesus Christ bring us wholeness. May the grace of God the Father grant us peace. May the breath of the Holy Spirit instill passion and the unity between them give us strength for this day and every day. Amen. May God go with you into the week.